Takashi Murakami grew up in Japan and was born in 1962, just years after the Hiroshima and Nagasaki atomic bombings. The aftermath of the bombs growing up, as well as prevalent American military presence in Japan, affected Murakami's revolution as an artist, as well as the fact that early on he became an art critic, which exposed him to various forms of art and helped him mold his own artistic direction. When he was a teenager, he became fascinated with Japanese animation. As seen today, he dedicates most of his works to the otaku audience. The otaku audience is a group that are obsessed with fetishistic and apocalyptic imagery. He uses motifs from manga and anime to connect with this audience in a world outside of reality. These motifs appear throughout all his work to create a cohesive understanding. In Blue Flowers and Skulls, Mirakami incorporates skulls and his signature digital smiling flowers to argue that with life comes death as well. He articulates the Buddhist conception of Shoigo Mujo, meaning everything is transient. Growing up in Japan, he has witnessed the obsession of Kawaii, which is cuteness and the conception of their whole societal goal of anti-aging. This goal of achieving an anti-aging state is very prevalent in contemporary culture, especially with the heavy use of plastic surgery. The skulls are supposed to act as a memento mori, which is a reminder of one's eventual death. When creating this work, he used serialized production and computerized databases. This method was used primarily in pre-modern Japan, and Mirakami strives to revive the form of collaborative creativity to try to move away from the Western notion that art comes from one artist's idea and work. Mirakami intends for his repetition of motifs like skulls and the smiling flowers to express his darker underlying views of modern society. In 2002, Mirakami was invited by the head designer of Louis Vuitton at the time, Marc Jacobs, to do a 13-year-long collaboration with Louis Vuitton. He integrated classic Louis Vuitton symbols and combined them with his signature jellyfish eye. He offered this design in 79 different colors. Not only did this propel Mirakami into the world of promoting commercial brands, but he brought in over $300 million of revenue for Louis Vuitton. Although it's not as professional to promote commercial brands as an artist, from a business standpoint, it helped him thrive in the art world. In making these bags, Mirakami wanted to convey that cultures and certain events and feelings in society today all come together through fashion. After his collaboration, he would put the designs made for the handbags on canvas. Through this, he aimed to blur the line between art and commodity. One of Mirakami's most famous works was the 500 Arhats, meant to be eye-catching in all its grandeur at 320 feet long and 10 feet high. The main subject of this piece are the Arhats, which are monks who have achieved enlightenment in Buddhism. Amongst the Arhat's feet, there are small human figures. These represent the Buddhist followers of the Arhats trying to reach enlightenment. Mirakami purposely depicts them in a way that juxtaposes the notion that beauty associates itself with enlightenment. He came up with the idea after he became infatuated with the study of the Heian period. During this period, there was a series of devastating disasters in Japan. In response, Buddhist monks created art that appealed to and inspired those who had endured the disasters. Mirakami created this after the 2011 earthquake in Japan. Not only did the earthquake kill several thousand people, but it brought a level 7 meltdown at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant, causing severe devastation throughout the surrounding cities, as well as forcing residents into immediate evacuation. During the disaster, Qatar was the number one country that provided aid for the Japanese. Mirakami created this piece to be displayed in Qatar as a thank you for their aid, just how the Arhats provided aid in the Heian period. In Mirakami's mind, this was just as comparable to the other historical pieces because it conveyed just as much historical meaning, but in a more modern way that he could understand. This work was a big milestone in Mirakami's career because he dealt with motifs and themes that conveyed religion, morality, and natural disaster. Mirakami has took the fate of the Kurita generation into his hands. In Japan, he has personally mentored many artists from the 1990s to 2000s. Some of his most famous successors are Aya Takano, Chiho Oshima, and Akane Koid. Them, as well as many other artists, coined from his creation of the super-flat neo-pop art movements. Mirakami's influence continues to reach far and wide and inspire many young artists today.